What's up guys, I'm Salty Mike, and this is your Star Citizen Week in Review for May 17th, 2020. This week, reputation is showing that it's gonna have way more of an impact than expected. Capacitors and operator modes are progressing, and it's Fleet Week, so let's check out the news. And before we start, we actually have a sponsor for today's video. It's Star Trek Fleet Command and their next generation update. So I don't ask you guys to do much to support me on this channel, but this is a five minute commitment. All you gotta do is take your phone out, scan the QR code, download the game, and get to level two to uh, count towards a goal that we have here on this channel of signing up 100 people in Star Trek Fleet Command. So give it a check out. Uh, and that will support this channel greatly. So with that said, let's jump into everything. Patch notes updates this week. We have 3.13F on the PTU where they checked out armistice zone violations and you're not gonna get a warning anymore. You're just going to get a crime stat and you will get to a crime stat really quickly. It seems like based off of these changes and it will stay on your account for longer. They also just did some general polish for the Nova and the Starlifter. Uh, more specifically, the Nova tank's health issue seems to have been resolved. They also made a lot of fleet week fixes based on PTU feedback, uh, 3.13.1G, more general fleet week fixes, and same for H, the usual fleet week fixes, but they also did a few bug fixes where players should no longer damage our own ships as we enter and exit them. Uh, 300 series customization should be back as they were not populating in game. Then moving on, we had a reputation AMA uh, and they start out where with, will you gate ships behind reputation? And I'm going to quote this exactly because this is super important to listen to. Quote, we are looking to gate many things in game, both items as well as ships behind the reputation system. We have to remember that without a leveling system, reputation is one of our more significant progressing uh, progressions in our game, if not the most. So now that it's in, we will be looking to get this hooked into all forms of rewards and mechanisms moving forward. As for what happens with people that already have these ships, you will always have access to these through your ASOP terminal. So pay to skip reputation requirements here. Um, that's that's not good to see. Uh, it's bad enough that you can buy the ships, but now you're skipping any reputation for them as well. However, what you will likely see as we move forward is that mission content, which will ultimately include large scale hauling missions, will likely be gated behind reputation and or me membership. So going back to specifically, if you purchase the ship, you are not required to go through the reputation. Now, this is definitely advantage of being here in the pre-alpha, things like that, but I don't know how much of an impact that's going to be. I went on a bit of a rant on this on my live stream yesterday. Um, for me, I've kind of given up on the fact that ships are going to be an important form of progression, and it does seem that because they're going to gate many things, both items as well as ships and, uh, and other things like maybe um, bonuses and stuff like that through the reputation system that hopefully that will help mitigate any issues that have happened during the funding of the game by using ships to do so. So it, I, it, it's not a great thing to hear, but overall I think that this is a really important step to remove any pay to win issues regarding Star Citizen. And uh, I think that this is a, is a good way to do it. They also followed up on org membership. They said they're not ready to talk about that just yet. So moving on, will Star Systems be locked behind reputation? Uh, they said no, they don't really wanna do that, but obviously your reputation will affect on how NPCs in that system respond to you. You know, so that's pretty cool. Reputation and hauling uh, contracts. These, this is like a two-parter. Luke starts out with, they want to start with missions to deliver as much cargo. I think it is safe to assume that this is like just mission boxes and not commodities. The more you get, the more you make, but it's time sensitive. So you could fail if you try to take on too much. Rob had a question about profession-based missions and dropped kind of a bomb that the current commodity system is going away seemingly completely for a time, we'll, we'll touch on that in a second, for 
a mission-based cargo system where a company will give you a mission to haul for them. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me based on like what we know about Quanta, cargo decks, and that will rent storage for things, but maybe things have changed. There is a follow-up that gives a little bit more detail here that you can still commodity trade maybe, but you can source and sell more based on reputation and faster here on this question and answer. So uh, I think this still kind of leaves things up in the air as far as cargo, but we'll have to see more as the changes do come online. The next question is a very, very important one for reputation. Do you plan to avoid the grind? And I really like his answer. I know most of this stuff already, but in case you didn't, they want to make a dynamic mission system. So that means each mission you take will essentially be the same mission and reward you with the same amount of reputation or money maybe, um, but the results of the experience that you have are going to be different. Like one time you might get jumped by an NPC, another time it might take you to different locations or more locations than the last time, and so on. So And maybe even the money is var varied as well. The plan to have players meet at mission related areas is also cool so like actual other players and not just npcs being brought to the mission that you're doing uh, then lastly what kind of rewards are planned discounts at shops free landing services access to gated items obviously job priority for example they gave refining uh, and probably cargo too so that is all i touched on for the ama there was a quite a few other questions but most of them were um, sort of repetitive or i thought sort of obvious but Link will be in the description for you guys to check that out. Moving on to video updates, we had an inside Star Citizen, uh, starting out with the capacitor feature. So let's pref pr uh, preface everything with their goals for capacitors and why they're changing. A good combat experience should be the actions that the player can do in order to modify the outcome of a battle, but not doing in a way that feels gamey. A lot of our combat performance is based on equipment, which you set up very, very easily. Some of the decisions you do in combat are just simply based on, hey, am I overclocking my power plant or not? That is also not a very interesting choice. You do it once before combat, and that's it. You might just move your shield sectors around a bit, right? But the amount of decisions you really do during combat is very limited. So I think this is spot on. Right now, the main decisions in combat are on the ASOP terminal, right? So your some ships and loadouts just lose. Uh, the fact that they want choice during combat to matter is the key here. So with that said, how do they work? Imagine it as a pool of energy that you have. Uh, and this is extra energy. This isn't energy that the ship already has. It's an extra pool of energy on the ship. And then imagine that you can now choose where this energy goes. So if you need some extra thrust to kind of outmaneuver or escape a situation you're not happy in, you can move all the extra energy for a limited amount of time to the thrusters. And then they'll perform at a higher window, basically, until the capacitor runs out. Okay, so this still leaves me a little bit confused because it, it, there, it's kind of a random video in the background that doesn't aid well with what he's explaining. Uh, so the next clip, I think, is the best out of all of the videos that that explain what capacitors do. These effects are drastic. These are really drastic. You cannot swap charges between, for example, guns to shields or something like that. That doesn't work. But you can tell each subsystem which should be preferred for regenerating. So instead of taping down your fire button, if you use energy weapons, you are now forced to pick when you're actually gonna fire them, right? And these uh, weapons, they will run out very, very fast. And the players that can think ahead and manage that situation, we think they'll have the advantage in combat. So as you can see, the guns are depleting, which seems to be a thing now, and so are the shields. So they put power into shields and then they recharge. They put power into energy weapons and they recharge faster the more power you put in. So if you guys wanna you know, go back and watch this a couple times, which it, it sort of took me to do, you should do that. Uh, operator modes, as always, they explain what it is and yeah, so have a listen. An operator mode, it basically allows us to split out a feature. So when you're in that seat, you get all the information that is on a particular task. And that's basically, you know, what an operator mode is. So operator modes that exist in the game right now are quantum drive, scanning is an operator mode. And we've also got mining as well. These people seem to be a little bit confused by. Uh, to me, I don't think this takes functionality away really from the pilot of the ship. It just allows someone in the ship to take control 
from the pilot of some of this functionality if they wish. And the modes they explain are to help you understand that, you know, scanning, mining, and quantum travel are modes that we have in the game right now that the pilot is typically only slave to. Uh, the next one would be, what is missile operator mode? Because that's the new one they're working on. The way that missile operator mode works right now is in a single pilot ship, you have the option to switch between your guns and then into missile operator mode and back out again. So you can't use both at the same time. But if you've got a multi-crew ship and you're in a pilot seat and you've got a co-pilot, you can use the guns and your co-pilot can have complete control over the missile system at the same time. You can pre-select how many missiles you want to fire, uh, lock them all on and then fire them all in a volley. That's quite fun to watch. Big anime blast of missiles as they fire off into the distance. We're hopeful that we've given the players enough information that when they you know, lock a target in missile operator mode, they understand that they've locked it, but then they also understand the next stages, which is how much of a lock do you have? You know, and what are your chances of hitting your target at that particular time? And being in missile operator mode gives you all that information. In general, I think a lot of people are upset that single seaters are getting a nerf, but I don't look at it that way. I, I don't think people are thinking critically about how this plays into the capacitor gameplay that's coming as well. So when your weapons are down, you can push your capacitors into your energy weapons, recharge those, switch modes, fire missiles, right, while you wait. So you're always in offensive mode unless you need it to charge your shields. Uh, this obviously also gives value to multi-crew ships, which have always been at a disadvantage from the moment they've been in the game. So, you know, like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. In order for the game to be enjoyable, they have to make uh, multi-crew ships enjoyable and have advantages and disadvantages. So, you know, the thing that they've been touting a lot, choice matters. You choose to fly a single seater ship, you choose to fly with friends, things like that. Uh, moving on to other updates then, uh, because Star Citizen Live was mostly just art stuff, so we usually don't touch on that. So again, link for that will be in the description. But again, other updates. PTU Fleet Week test, uh, they've been doing these. It, it kind of bums me out that you, know, the, you can see the whole thing before it actually happens, so it's not really this event that just appears, but how else can they test these things at scale without us, right? So it kind of has to happen. Lore Post is a gift for Baba Part 2. Uh, story, it's the story that's referenced in the Benny Henge hints to find it. Dual mode feedback. Uh, this is just the team looking for your feedback on 1v1 mode, 1v1 mode in Arena Commander. So if you've take part in, taken part in that, link for that thread will be in the description for you to give feedback. Uh, John Crew went off on the Redeemer on Spectrum. So if you have the Redeemer or are interested in the Redeemer, he gave a lot of updates on the ship. I'm just going to summarize a few here. Uh, crew went from 5 down to 4. Large components now versus medium. And 2 SCU has been added to the ship for cargo missions. Again, Check the link post in the description. If you're really interested in the ship, there's a lot more detail there. Uh, there was also a sneak peek, an airlock for an outpost. I don't know. This is uh, this gives me a lot of like imagined moments in my head, and it's why I don't want to see these as much because I know we're not going to have them in our hands anytime soon, and it's going to be a bummer to not have them because, man, I want my outposts. Uh, and lastly today, Yogi on control complexity a little bit. Uh, they're they're mainly talking sticks in this post but somebody asked like why are there so why do we need so many um you know keybinds to fly and i have no idea how a mouse and keyboard user is going to manage a speed limiter boost capacitor boost capacitor shields and 19 other different things during combat so um you know again him just touching on sticks here is not a good sign for mouse and keyboard users so i really hope they they do work on that he did touch on the fact that uh some binds will have multiple options like push and hold and double tap and things like that like give more functionality to that but at the same time um i think we're we're creating a very complex game that is not simple to understand and difficult to master i think it's just difficult and even more difficult to master so Hopefully we simplify things at some, some point in the future. But today, guys, that will do it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week.